Hey guys. Well, this is video number two on the Logix Pro Silo project. Uh, in the previous video, we did exercise one, which was basically operating the silo in a continuous mode of operation. I have that pulled up here. And in this particular video, we're going to do exercise two. So if you go to the student exercises and we scroll down to exercise two, you can see that exercise two is a manual operation. In other words, it's going to do one box at a time. It's not going to be a continuous operation. So the conveyor will stop when the box gets into position. The box is going to be filled. And then at that point, once the box is full, the operation stops. And then you have to um, manually restart or hit the start button to get the process to start back up, to move the full box out of position and then bring in an empty box. So every time a box fills, you'll have to press start to continue. Okay. Now there's uh, several different ways to uh, program this. Uh, I'm going to pick what I think is the easiest method to teach for this particular video. Um, so let's get this out of run mode and back into program because what I have pulled up here is our exercise one that we did in the previous video. And we're going to modify this. So one of the things that uh, this is going to have to do is it needs to automatically stop at the end of the filling or when the box is full. So we don't want the uh, motor to automatically stop, uh, start back up. Okay. So there are a few ways to do this. First of all, we have to uh, put something in our program to keep that motor from starting back up. And uh, again, like I said, there are multiple ways to do it. Let's do it this way. What can we use in the program to keep that motor from starting back up when the box is full? Because remember, we use the full light here to start the motor back up. We can use the level sensor. Let's try that. Let's put in the level sensor. So when the level sensor closes, we want this instruction to open like so. And will that stop the motor? Let's see. Let's download. Go to run. Start. Yeah. So now the box is full and uh, the motor won't come back on because the level sensor is sitting there closed because the box is full. And so that is keeping the motor from energizing. Now they asked, they told us that they want the, they want the start button to be what initiates this process to start back up. Okay. So it says once the box is full, momentarily pressing the start switch will move the box off the conveyor and bring a new box into position, forcing the operator to hold the start button down, start button down until the box clears. The proc sensor is not acceptable. So the first thing that comes to mind is, all right, if we want this motor to start back up with the start switch or the start button, What's keeping it from starting back up right now is this level switch that we put in the uh, instruction for the level sensor. So I've obviously got to put a bypass in around that. So I'm going to put a branch around the level like so, and we're going to use the start button around it. That makes the most sense, right? Because that's what's got to initiate it to start back up. So we're going to use the start button around that. Okay. So now let's test that. Let's see what we got. Let's reset. Let's download and go to run. Press start. Okay. Press start. Whoops. Momentarily pressing the start, it just kind of bumps the, the box over. It's just bumping the conveyor until the box gets past the proximity sensor. So this is what they were telling us. 
to get this to work properly, I've got to hold the start button down until the box gets past the proximity sensor. And then it appears to work great. But you can't hold the start button down. Okay. Well, that presents a little bit of a challenge. But let's go back and think about the run light. If we didn't have this branch here around the start button, the run light would only come on while I'm holding the start button down. Oh, okay. But how did I keep the output on even after I let go of the start button? That's kind of what we want to happen here. We want the motor to stay on even when I let go of the start button. Okay. So let's see. Um, well, we can do what we did here. We put a branch around the start button that has the output. That's like our start stop run format. So to do that, let's try it. Let's put a branch around the start button. Like so. And our output will be in the branch. So this method, once I press the start button and the motor comes on, the motor should keep the start button pressed, kind of. It has the same effect. So let's see if this works. Sometimes when we add ingenious things like this, it can break other things. So let's see what we got. Press start. Okay, it stopped automatically. Now I've got a, pr notice the run light is still on. That's okay. You can do this program where the run light stays on or it goes off either way. In my case, it stays on. And then I press start. Just quickly press, oh, look at there. So quickly press start. And it seemed to work. And this weren't too bad. Press start. Again, I'm not holding start down. I'm just quickly pressing it and letting go just a quick click of the start button and it's running so that wasn't bad so this is exercise two and then you can actually go back to the student exercise and make sure that it meets all the specifications but basically exercise two is just a modification of exercise one where it's now what we call manual mode where the, at each box filling, I have to an operator has to come up and press start to get the box to move out. An example would be where an operator has to inspect each box that's been filled before the box automatically goes down the assembly line or goes down the conveyor belt. Um, so we've done that. And really the only thing we added here was uh, we added an instruction for the level switch, the start switch, and the motor here in this parallel circuit on the second rung with that's controlling the motor nothing else we've changed everything else is just like it was for exercise one okay so uh let's see let's save this while we're here i'm gonna click save and i'm gonna call this silo two and click save all right. Well, thanks for watching my video. I hope you got something out of this and you're learning some PLC program and progressing forward. Please be sure to watch my previous videos, especially the one on silo exercise one. And then also be sure to watch my upcoming videos on silos and other simulations here in Logix Pro. Thanks guys.